Howdy everyone and welcome back to another Starting From Scratch Football Manager 2015 experiment. And today I've decided to do what you've all wanted me to do, or quite a few people have asked for this anyway. Um, and it's something I'd thought about doing a while ago, before anyone even mentioned it. Great minds think alike as I've explained before. So what I have done is I've removed all the first team players and the managers from every single Premier League team. So it's going to be a right old mess. It's going to be quite interesting. I've holiday quite far into the future. I've got all the save files ready to analyse as we go along. So oh, it's, it's going to be <laughs> carnage, I think. All the managers will probably switch teams and players may do that as well. Um, we'll have to see. Ignore this. They're not really at the team. It, it just saves the captain and vice captain names to start with. That will change over time. So this is Arsenal, for example. I've deleted all. I've also deleted any youngsters that have currently over a potential of 125. So I've deleted reserve team players as well that have a current ability of 125 or more. And I've kept that the same for every single team, just to be fair. It's sort of removing some of the wonder kids, but it'd be interesting to see where they go. For example, if I left in every single player under 21, we'd still see Raheem Sterling at Liverpool. But removing him, it just is interesting to see where he goes. So that's the whole purpose of this series. I could just remove every single player, but that would be a bit ridiculous. Teams would have no one to play with, and some teams don't seem to sign very many players. So I think it's fair to keep some of the youngsters in. No one over the age of 21 is in any team. And I've nearly got to the bottom. There we go. So, what what will happen? I'm going to holiday to the end of the first transfer window, then the second transfer window, and then from then on it will be a season update or skipping through three or four seasons each time. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to keep this video quite short because there's a lot of detail, but it's going to be also very difficult to actually analyse everything in detail. Um, but I'm going to allow you to download the database so you can have a play around yourself play with this database and it's probably the most exciting one to play with taking control of a Premier League team and trying to sign lots of different players so apologies if this video is really long uh, you can always watch it in chunks I was thinking about doing it in different parts but I think I'll just do a long video and see how it goes so as you can see there Ronald Koeman's in charge of Arsenal and these are the signings they made I'm just going to whiz down and you can see which players they've signed and for how much so I mean you know, there's going to be a lot of championship players once again Keith Keane what is up with him going to these big teams when they're starting from scratch anyway I'm going to whiz down like I said to Aston Villa not many players coming in Burnley and then we'll look at the managers quickly as well Rob Hall the biggest signing for Chelsea Crystal Palace Everton uh, Jordan Chappell's the biggest signing for Hull Hayden White's the biggest for Leicester. Then we've got Liverpool. Uh, Man City. Obviously, there's going to be some free players, which you might notice some big ones in there. I mean, Man United have re-signed Javier Hernandez. They've also sent Ramsey, Joe Hart, Lee Catamore, Ryan Bertrand, Cole Jenkins. Those are probably the biggest signings we've seen. So I think Man United should do well. Time will tell, though. Newcastle signing Deli Alley, who's a, a wonder kid from NK Dons. QPR... Southampton signing a few players. Stoke, not many coming in. Sunderland, lots of players coming in. Swansea, got El Hajjouf and Abdullah Fay. Tottenham, lots of players coming in. Uh, West Brom, and lastly, West Ham, quite a few players as well coming into the team. So let's have a quick look. Dave Jones in charge of West Ham. So, like I said, Ronald Koeman. Aston Villa have Tony Pulis. Burnley have Jens Lehmann. Uh, Chelsea have Manuel Pellegrini, Crystal Palace have Tony Mowbray, Everton have Ian Holloway, Hull have Martin Yole, Leicester have Owen Coyle, Liverpool have Brendan Rodgers still, so they've re-signed him, interesting, Man City have Roberto Mancini, he's come back there again, Frank Rijkaard's in charge of Man United, Newcastle have Nigel Pearson, QPR have Carl Robinson, Southampton have Steve Bruce, Paul Lintz is in charge of Stoke. Sunderland have Billy Davies. Swansea have Simon Ireland. Tottenham have Hube Stevens. Is that right? And West Brom have Phil Parkinson. Oh, interesting. 
and Dave Jones West Ham, like I said. So there we go. I'm going to holiday to the end of January, see how they are, and then, yep, yeah, go from there. So at the halfway point of the season, Chelsea are top, one point ahead of Newcastle, uh, Man United, sorry, and then Newcastle. Burnley, Aston Villa and Stoke in the relegation zone. So not much different, really. Man City down in 8th, Everton down in 15th. But, I mean, I think it's inevitable. If you remove all the players from every team, then it's common sense that the teams with the most money will recover quickly and be on top. Top goal scorer, Javier Hernandez, as you'd probably expect from all the players that we've seen. Most assist, Deli Ali for Newcastle. So... What will be interesting is next season, will the championship sides coming up, will they be able to do really well? We will see. There's been some manager changes already, as you can see. But I'm going to go down the transfers again just for January. Just have a quick look and then whiz through to the end of the season. So this is Arsenal's transfers. And going down, Aston Villa, Burnley. You can pause it if you want. Chelsea, Crystal Palace. Everton, Hull, Leicester, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Newcastle, QPR, Southampton, Stoke, Sunderland, Swansea, Tottenham, West Brom, and West Ham. So I don't know how many extra transfers there have been, but if you pause that, you can have a, a quick look yourself. But this was just, I was just updating to see how it was halfway through the season. But we're holiday through to the end of the first season. See what the uh, outcome is. And it'd be really interesting to see what happens in the preceding seasons. So this is the end of the 2014-15 season. Chelsea won the league of 88 points. Man United second, Newcastle and Arsenal finishing fourth. Uh, Hull, Burnley and Stoke going down to the championship. Just have a quick look who's coming up. Norwich, uh, Watford and Wigan. So how will they do next season amongst all these teams that have perhaps League One championship quality players? Man City down in 11th. Everton very close to getting relegated as well. Stats wise, top scorer was Javier Hernandez, 25. Chris Wood, second top scorer. But people like Fortune, Theo Robinson and Lee Novak on the list. I mean, that some of those are League One quality players. And... It just shows the difference between some of the signings that some of these teams have managed to make. Rob Paul was top assists for Chelsea. He's got one England cap. That's really crazy. Considering, I mean, he's a bit of a... I mean, he's just dropped down to the championship in real life. And, yeah, there he is at the top of the assists pile for Chelsea. And he's got an England cap because of it. It's amazing. Some of these... It may actually benefit some of the English players... Deli Ali has one goal in one game for England because obviously there's a lot more English or British players at least playing in the top division. That is really interesting. How, how will England benefit from it? They might have not so good players playing for them, but over time perhaps they would develop to be really strong players internationally and possibly go on and benefit the team overall. Because I guess that, I mean, there's going to be some players. I mean, where did Aguero go, for example? Sergio Aguero doesn't have a club. Raheem Sterling doesn't have a club. Let's look at the England team and see. I mean, most of the players are, in fact, playing for Premiership teams. Um, but a lot of them are. I mean, Phil Jones has gone back to Man United. John Stones is at Man United. Jaggy Elka, Cahill, they're all at Man United. What's going on? Joe Hart. John Ruddy is still there. Jack Butland is at Nottingham Forest. Kulka and Kyle Walker at Celtic. But then some of these names that wouldn't really make it into the England team. But they are. Wayne Rooney doesn't have a team, but he's still at in the England team. Jay Rodriguez is at Granada. Players like Company is at Barcelona. One matter has retired. I mean, we've really messed with the game big time. John Terry's become a manager. Courtois moved to Napoli. Christian Eriksen's at Besiktas. I mean, there's just so many interesting transfers. So definitely download this database. See what happens in your game and let me know what happens because there's some really crazy things. I've completely messed with the game by doing this. Players haven't been able to find clubs because there's so many players that are available and are free. Not everyone can afford these big players and they've just resulted in 
it's just turn, they've retired or they've gone to they've had to go to teams that they wouldn't usually sign for or simply they're not playing for a team but they still might be playing international football it really is interesting so we'll just have a quick look at some of the teams uh, Chelsea for example this is their team let's have a look at top goal scorer was Marvin Sordell then, and James Wilson who they signed uh, Nicky Maynard also got 15 goals Marcelo Trotter it's just like crazy Oh, I just can't believe what's happened to some of these teams. It's hilarious. Jay Boyth Boothroyd on loan for Everton with 14 goals. Well, Brett, Brett Pittman for Leicester. Mark Antoine Fortune for Liverpool. This guy, Jose Angel Pozo, is their top scorer. Man City have really suffered, haven't they? But Man United have just picked up so many good players, mainly because... Um, I suppose they've got the money. I think they could go on to dominate in the coming seasons. Berahino, 19 goals. Adam Campbell with 14. QPR. I'm, I could look at this for hours because it's just so interesting what has happened. <laughs> Lee Novak for West Ham is just hilarious. He's really a... I mean, he's playing for Birmingham in real life. Not really scoring. And he's gone to the Premiership and scored 19 goals. Crazy. So I'm going to holiday a, another season. I'm going to be holidaying quite a few in total, but we'll holiday one more um, and look at that and then holiday a few at a time each time. So at the end of the second season, Man United managed to win the league. But the most interesting thing is two of the teams coming up from the championship finished second and fourth. Wigan and Watford, look at them. Norwich finished seventh. So it just shows the quality of the premiership now has diminished. If we look at the competition as a whole... I can probably see the competition losing um, some of its Champions League places over time if it does diminish. Forgot to look at the Champions League last season. Juventus won it, but we'll have a quick look at how the English teams did. As you can see, Newcastle <laughs> this season finished in third, but Man United second in their group. But we'll go back to last season. And just see, Chelsea did actually manage to qualify from their group. Uh, Man City bottom of their group. Liverpool bottom of their group. So obviously it would have affected them. But this season, interesting. Chelsea qualifying. Let's have a look at the final. It was, of course, Juventus winning. Did any of the English teams get... Uh, I think they all got knocked out in the first knockout round. Chelsea lost against Barcelona. Man United lost against PSG. There's just so many different details. Just oh, That's crazy. But um, I'm going to look at the managers quickly. As you can see, Jack Walsh is back at Arsenal and captain. Uh, but we're going to look at all the, the managers. Sean Dyche in charge of Aston Villa. Pellegrini still in charge of Chelsea. Chris Hutton in charge of Palace. David Moyes back at Everton. <laughs> Owen Cole at Leicester. Liverpool have Michel. And Man City have Cesare Prandelli. And United have Van Gaal back. Ooh, interesting. Newcastle, Andre Villas Boas. Norwich have Neil Adams. Cooper have Carl Robinson. Steve Bruce in charge of Southampton. Sunderland have Doogie Friedman. Swansea have Paul Jewell. Ruth Hullet in charge of Tottenham. Jokanovic in charge of Watford. West Brom have Phil Parkinson still. And West Ham have Mark Hughes now. So, oh, massive changes. Top scorer wise, let's have a look. It was Mitrovic for Chelsea. Jordan Rhodes for Arsenal. Lee Novak still there. What a beast. <laughs> what a crazy player. One for an assist for Watford as well. Ah, what is interesting? How did the teams that got relegated to the championship do? Did they manage to get promoted again? Black no, Burnley and Stoke going straight down to League One. Oh no. Well, who was the other team? Can't remember who it was. Go down the list. Ah, yes, hole down there as well in 19th. So, oh, it really impacted them. The first three teams to go down, probably in the worst position. Going down this season was Palace, Sunderland and Swansea. So how will they get affected? The teams are going to get end up everywhere, aren't they? It's going to be really messy, but good to see. We'll have a quick look at the signings as well before moving on into a few seasons into the future. So Arsenal spent a lot of money this season to finish fifth. Actually, going down a place from last year. 
Aston Villa spent quite a bit as well. They're all spending a lot. Chelsea spent a lot. Even Palace spent 21 million. Everton spent 25. Leicester spent 31. Liverpool spent 57.2. Man City spent not very much. Oh, what's happened to them? Reputation's gone down, perhaps. The owners are going to get bored of them. Man United spent 102 million. Kovacic, Lukaku, Kalyan, and Barbosa. Four massive players coming into the team. Newcastle, uh, Norwich, QPR spending quite a bit. Southampton spending a little bit. Sunderland, about 15 million as well. Swansea, 25 million. Tottenham, 38. Watford, 15. And West Brom, 13.5. And West Ham not spending very much. Wow, cool, that's really interesting. Who's won, who's winning the Cups? Let's have a look. Sorry, this video is going to be very long, and I don't blame you if you do switch off, but if you want to hang around and see what happens. Bolton won the, the FA Cup last season. We forgot to look at this. Watford won it this season. So a championship team, an all-championship final, and then this season, of course, Watford are promoted and winning the FA Cup against Championship Brighton. That, that is that is really interesting. This season, Sheffield Wednesday beat Man United in the final of the Capital One Cup. Last season, oh, what's going on here? We don't want to see this. We want to see the final. Ipswich beat Bournemouth on penalties. Wow, it's just so fascinating. Have fun playing with this database, because oh, I, um, I think I might actually start a save with this. It'd be really interesting. Maybe take control of a championship side, get promoted, and then just whoop the premiership. <laughs> That'd be quite fun as well. Try and pick up quite lots of free signings as well. Just before we move on, we'll have a look at the England team. As you can see, Wayne Rooney's now at Newcastle. Um, but he is still, I mean, Leicester up into fifth place in the major clubs in England, apparently. Let's have a look at the team and the, the teams that they're playing for. So we've got Joe Hart. Fraser Forster's at Chelsea. John Flanagan's in there. He's at Ipswich. Uh, quite a few players playing for Celtic, actually. Ashley Young. Lots of Newcastle players in there. They've become a very good team. Oxlade Chamberlain's at Newcastle. Wilshire's gone back to Arsenal, like I said. They've also got Daniel Sturridge. So I'm going to move on now. Holiday three seasons and see where everyone is. So let's look at the carnage as of. June 2019. Chelsea have won the, the most recent league title. As you can see, there's only three Champions League places now. And the Euro Cup's been a bit messed up. Coventry, Derby and Huddersfield going down from the Premier League this season. Millwall up in there. West Ham finishing 7th. Liverpool down in 13th. Top, five, top 4 is what you'd probably expect, I guess. Uh, let's go back a couple seasons. So Man United have dominated, as you can see. Um, Newcastle and Norwich finishing in the Champions League places that season. Then Wigan and Watford, once again, they've turned into good teams. And this season, Chelsea managing to recover and win the league. Stats-wise, top scorer, Mitrovic for Chelsea. Ah, Woodrow. Uh, Ramsey, top assist for Man United. Joe Allen got the greatest shots on target for Man City. Everything's messed up. It's just fantastic. I love it. This is what the championship looks like. Leeds, Leicester and Bolton going up. But there's Swansea in there now. West Brom. Let's go down to League One. Who's who's in this division? Sunderland are down there. Blackburn. Cool, it's a right old mess. Sunderland down in League One. What about League Two? Hull have just got promoted from League One. Is anyone all the way down in League Two? Let's have a quick look. See what's going on there. Don't think there's anyone. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a right old mess if they've gone down to League Two. Oh, no, I don't think there'd be anyone in. I don't think had a, we've had enough time to get into the conference. Um, but yeah, wow, it's really quite interesting to see what has happened. Oh, we'll have a quick look at the cups as well, of course. So the FA Cup has been won, apart from Man City, they've been. Teams that you'd not really expect. Wigan have won it for a second time. Bournemouth won it this season against Newcastle. Uh, Capital One Cup, though, the first two wins were unexpected. But since then, Man United, Chelsea and Man United. Man United beating Middlesbrough in this final. Champions League-wise, the usual suspects in charge of that. And the Euro Cup. Chelsea managed to win it in 2018. 
the England teams led by Lauren Blanc and their top player is now Oxley Chamberlain. Wigan are the fourth best team in England according to this. Let's le- have a look at the, the squad. Joe Hart's still in there playing for Man United. Right old mess, isn't it? Quite a few players for Newcastle. Leighton Baines, Jordan Henderson, Dele Alley, Welbeck plays for Man City, Sturridge to the Arsenal, Townsend at Southampton, Tom Ince at Wigan, Raheem Sterling at Chelsea now, Luke Shaw's at Chelsea as well. Let's have a look at the managers quickly, see what's been what has been going on. Bournemouth have Ron, Ron, Ronald Koeman in charge. Coventry in the Premier, Premiership going down though this season. Eddie Howe in charge of Fulham. Chris Powell in charge of Huddersfield. Man City have Roberto Martinez. Man United have Marcelo Bielsa. Man will have Brian McDermott. Neil Adams still in charge of Norwich. Sammy Hippie in charge of Nottingham Forest. Slavin Bilic in charge of Southampton. Rui Gullit still there. West Ham of Mark Hughes still. So wow, ah, oh, it's it's really quite messed up, but brilliant at the same time. Um, we'll, we'll quickly go through the. Actually, there's no point going through transfers. It will take forever to show everything. Um, but they, there's Arsenal for you. So I'll holiday again into the future, a few years, and see what's going on. So this is as far as we go. We're into 2024 and. Yep, this will be the last update. I will possibly be doing some more things with this at some stage if you've got any suggestions. Uh, England has four Champions League places back again. Um, but yeah, play with the database. It, I'm sure it'll be great fun. Arsenal have won the league this site season. We'll go back to last one. So in 2019-20, Man United won the league again. Liverpool were relegated with Everton. And then the season after that, Aston Villa going down, as you can see. Wigan in fifth, doing very well. Man United still dominating, 99 points. That's mental, 100 goals scored as well. And then winning the league again, they really have dominated. Bournemouth up there in sixth place. Liverpool going down once again with Everton. Interesting. That was close as well, all 39 points. Look at that, 40 points for the three above them as well. Really tight. And lastly, this season, Arsenal winning the league. Is there any still? Is there still any players that we know? Is that Bernard? Yeah, we know Bernard. Doing very well for West Ham. Shell at Aston Villa. James Ward-Prowse at Wigan. A massive player for England by the looks of it. And Wigan are huge. Their reputation is worldwide. They've got four and a half star reputation. Uh, David Spinners at Newcastle. Let's have a look at the divisions below then. So championship-wise, Everton have gone up by the playoffs. Liverpool have gone up as well, but they've turned into yo-yo teams. That's really quite interesting what's happened to Liverpool and Everton. Sammy Hipper in charge of Liverpool now, incidentally. Sunderland in the championship as a Stoke. Is anyone in League One that shouldn't be there? <laughs> South End going up with Colchester, two Essex teams. Swansea down in League 1 again. They've been affected quite badly, haven't they? League 2, anything going on down there? Wouldn't have thought so. Oh, what am I clicking on? Here we go. Birmingham have dropped down. But obviously they weren't a premiership team. But maybe it has had an impact further down on teams as well. And I can't imagine there's anyone in the conference that started off in the um, premiership. Chester going at Preston in the conference. FA Cup, we've seen Man United, Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, and then Newcastle win. So it's been the usual suspects winning the FA Cup. League Cup wise, it's the usual suspects again. So it's gone back to how it really is in real life in terms of competition wins. But we've seen the progress of certain teams that you wouldn't expect to be progressing, like Wigan. Watford up there, Brighton Forest, there's lots of champ- Coventry up there again, Derby, there's a lot of Championship or League One, current League One teams that have done very well thanks to this. Some teams have become very big. West Ham are doing quite well um, by the looks of it. 
But we'll have a we'll have a quick look at the managers once again. See who's in charge. You can see who's captain of your team. Callum Chambers as well. You can also look at the finances and stuff as I whiz through. So Arsenal, Aston Villa have Tony Mowbray. Then we're going to move on to Bournemouth with Filippo Inzaghi. Brighton, Darko Milinic. Chelsea have Jurgen Klopp. Cristiano Ronaldo, in captain of Chelsea. He must be quite old. Must be ancient, in fact. Yep, he's 39 years old and he's captain of Chelsea. Now let's go down Coventry. Palace, Gary McAllister. Derby have Donadoni. Leicester have Subalkan. Man City have Armin Vey. Man United have Leonardo Jardim now. Let's have a look at their manager history. Obviously, they've been the most successful team on this episode. They've had a few managers, but they've done very well. They've won a lot of competitions. Kovacic is their vice captain. Barbosa is their captain. How's, how's he developed? 99 caps for Brazil at the age of 19, at the age of 27. That's insane. What a player. Kovacic is probably pretty good as well. 108 caps for Croatia. Wow. Mark Hughes in charge of Millwall. He's gone from West Ham to Millwall. Newcastle of Michelle. Nottingham Forest of Emery. Southampton of Paolo Sousa. Tottenham have Antonio Conte. Watford have Ronald Koeman. He's been around everywhere, hasn't he? West Brom, Neil McFarlane. And West Ham have Ronnie Della. Wow. It's been so interesting, this. Let's have a look at the Champions League. So Man United have managed to win it the last two seasons. They really have been dominant, haven't they? They've spent quite a bit of money most seasons on some big players. 108 million that year. Wow. They have been magnificent. They, oh, Monaco won it, and Inter as well. So you see who won the Euro Cup. Man City, a oh, Wigan have won it. Oh, wow, it's brilliant. So England did manage to win the World Cup in 2018, which is fascinating, really. Let's go back to 2018. Who did they beat? They beat Spain in the final, Leighton Baines with the penalty. So perhaps it did help them. <laughs> Pep Guardiola in charge of the team as well. That always helps. This is the team. Jason Steele in there. Butland. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of uh, regens. Callum Chambers there. John Stones. Colker still there. Luke Shaw. Will Hughes. It's the usual suspects, to be honest, but it's just a mixture of teams that you maybe wouldn't usually expect to be in there. Like Coventry have a player in there, Mark Hodge, a regen. So please let me know your thoughts on this video. Please leave a like if you have enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Sorry that it's been such a long video, but I hope you have found it exciting, interesting, unusual, crazy, funny, whatever. And if so, please leave a like and a comment. That would be much appreciated. And if you've got any ideas I can do with this database, let me know. But if not, have fun yourself. And I'll see you in a future video. Thanks, guys.